Over to you. All right, so good morning, everyone. I hope you all are seeing me right and everything is working well. Yes, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. 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 Hope we all are great and just ready to hear what God has to say. This is great. Thank you for bringing us to another Sunday, another time to hear from you, to hear directly what you have to say. Lord, it's not about me, it's not about anyone here, it's not about what we can do, it's about what you have to say. Pour us on your blood, take away nervousness, anxiety, and let's just learn from you, Lord God. In your name I pray, amen. All right, so the topic for today is God is with us. So the scripture was read earlier from Matthew chapter 8, from verse 23 to verse 27. So I won't read all of it, but I'll try and focus on verse 24 and verse 25 at this moment in time. So verse 24 says, And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, in so much that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep, he being Jesus. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And I'll just read part of verse 26. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? No, the thing about stories like these, we weren't really there, so we can't really understand the scope of the disaster. We can't we can only imagine how rough the storm might have been. Lightning everywhere, um tornadoes on sea, they would call them water spots, thunder, everything. So like things like this, I try to find a way to visualize it because it helps me understand it more. So I was looking for something that would basically represent this and this is what I found. So imagine you're in a boat like this, right? And the boat is going over waves. The scripture said that the waves were even coming on top of the boat. Like I don't know about you, but I would probably be scared being in this situation. But yet God is saying that they had little faith. No, the thing about these situations it could be a storm, and the storm doesn't necessarily have to be a physical storm with thunder and rain. It can be the storms of life. Now, right now, is this our storm? There's a COVID-19 pandemic happening even now. Cases are rising with the vaccine. People in Ontario, you guys are probably frustrated because you're in a third COVID-19 lockdown. Um, like as soon as it opens up, it's like the cases rise and then it they have to close the borders and all those stuff again. But it's in situations like these that we tend to forget who God really is. So we we'll have to go back to the Bible to see some examples of who God really is. Now the first one is Matthew chapter 14 from verse 14 to 21. We should all know is the story of the five loaves and the two fishes. And I read it. And it says, And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. This was a miracle alone by itself. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. Emphasis on the word but, because how could you share five loaves and two fishes to two thousands of people, to thousands of people? The next verse says, he said, bring them hither to me. Now, I look at this, these two verses and they can represent our problems as well. So we might have a problem and a situation wondering, how God going to turn it around for me? For me? 
How is he going to turn from something bad into something good? But Jesus is saying, bring it to me. It might seem impossible, but still bring it to me. It might look like it don't make That's sense. Lord. It might look like it's not going to work out, but bring mm -hmm. it to me. Amen. 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 And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves, the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Mm -hmm. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up all the fragments that remained, 12 baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men, beside women and children. Now look at this situation. What seemed impossible, what seemed like it wasn't going to work out, God was able to show up through Jesus and feed thousands of people. Mm -hmm. Now another situation where God showed up and showed who he really is is in Luke chapter 8 from verse 43 to verse 48. It says, And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, which could be like doctors, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thrown thee, everybody is touching him, and press thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody had touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what? Because she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole, go in peace. And you'll hear about this story many times, hundreds of times. But one thing that I realize is that the woman with the issue of blood, she not only reached out physically to touch Jesus, she had to reach out in faith. Because verse, yeah, verse 48 says, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. That's right. Yeah. Only Amen. she could reach out to touch him physically, but also reaching out in faith. Yeah. So sometimes we will have Amen. to exercise our faith, especially now. So all these years before, we've been hearing about, oh, we should have faith in God. We should trust him in any situation. Well, now is really the time to exercise our faith. Because yeah. we really don't have any choice. I have faith in God, what we're going to do, worry, that don't make any sense. So this is really the time that we have to exercise <laughs> and not just talk about it. Mm. Amen. So we have to practice having faith. Another situation is parting of the Red Sea. So as I said before, I like to see things to make me better understand it. I know we might have some more visual learners here. So this is another example. Exodus 14, which talks about the Israelites departing and going through the Red Sea with Moses. Now, the Israelites, they are going to walk through this, right? And they are following somebody through this. I don't know about anybody else, but I would really be so excited to walk through with two ways beside me. Over, <laughs> over me, and people <laughs> running after me behind in horses, chariots. I would really be yes. so excited to go into yes. that situation. But yes. they had to practice faith. They yes. couldn't stay yes. behind. They had to exercise faith, even yes. though they might not have known what it was at the time. It was really faith, because they had to trust somebody. They had to trust in Moses to know that, all right, this man said that I'm going to help us get on the other side, so we're going to have to walk through it. And everybody walked through. So, I came up with a little graph which says, future faith projections, FFP for short. Now, in different businesses, in stocks, they always have graphs to show what the potential growth will be for a quarter, 
of the year to see how much profit they will make. Now, future failed projections, this is, this will show us our fate if it will be growing. Now, in situations like now in a pandemic when we have nobody else to rely on, on God, but God, our fate will overall increase. Yes, there might be bumps along the way, but overall it should grow if Amen. we choose to believe in him. If Amen. we choose to believe and trust that God will come true for us, even when it don't look like it's going to happen. Amen. 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 If you want your future Amen. faith to grow, you will have to trust him. Amen. Amen. Now, what are some ways to remember that God is with us? Now, first up, talk to God. In any friendship, any relationship, communication is key. Mm -hmm. If you're not speaking with God, how can you expect to hear from him? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we really have to talk to God. We might think that he's not listening. We might think that oh, I'm too busy. I'm out the whole world taking care of, but he hears you. He listens to you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You might Amen. not have a paragraph, you might not give you a speech. Sometimes just one word, mm. sometimes just one line, and you have to be like, all right, that is God, I hear you. Amen. So, Amen. And to hear from him, we can't have anything blocking the channel. We can't have anything separating us from God and Amen. us. It has Amen. to be a clear channel. And otherwise from that, it will be altered. We won't know the voice of the shepherd. Mm, amen. The second one is using your imagination for good. Now, a lot of times we worry and we say, oh, is this going to work out? What do I need to do now so that this will happen by X time? What do I need to do? Maybe if I do this, it's not going to work out. But instead, use your imagination for good. Mm. Try to visualize like what you want to become, what you want your future to be like. No. Amen. Amen. School, um, the vice principal at the time, during orientation, she told us to all the students to look up onto the stage because this is where the graduates will be in white chairs. So she always said that we should visualize ourselves on these stage, on the stage with white chairs. So throughout the whole high school, I would try. <laughs> Try and visualize myself <laughs> in that white chair. And at the end of the year, the whole five year experience, it did happen. And we did graduate. So Amen. Instead of Amen. Example, Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. Go run. Use your imagination for good to try and visualize what you want. Now, one verse that reminds me of this is from Habakkuk 2, verse 2, which says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that read it. I'll say it again. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that read it. Amen. So this ties in with, first with the method two, use your imagination for good. Because even though in a situation at the moment, it might look like it's impossible, it might not look like it's going to work out, you have already written out what you want to see happen. Amen. So even if you're, you're running the race and you see that it's like you're losing, you see everybody going faster, faster, you like your situation not going to work out. Right now, you can look back on what you have written and say that God, <clears throat> even though it's not working out right now, I know that you will come through for me. I know that you will make this happen if it is your will. Amen. 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 So this is Oh, we should use our imagination for good. Write it down, write down our goals, write down what we want to be, write down what we want. And if it is God's will, he will come through for us. Amen. 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 Now, the third one is help someone. Mm -hmm. so this third one kind of stands out from the rest because it's kind of like weird, right? It's in your situation, in your body, Time, why should you help someone? Mm -hmm. so, this is kind of one of the most important ones because it's not about us. It's not about you. In your bad times, you might feel like, 
oh, the world crashing down on me, everything mm. looks bad. <laughs> and like, it, it's like you're fixated on yourself. Mm. Mm. It's all about me. But truly, it's not about you. Yeah. Even in the, Amen. You have the ability to help someone. You have the ability to, ability to share some good news with someone. Amen. Amen. So you might think that during these bad times, you don't have any value, but maybe there's someone out there that needs just what you can wow. help with. Mm-hmm. And then the greatest commandment God says is love each other as ourselves. There's no other great commandment. Because when we are helping someone, he says that iron sharpens iron, right? Mm-hmm. So if you are helping someone who is going through something bad, they might be able to share a testimony with you which can strengthen you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you might think they're, you are helping someone, but really they are really helping you. Amen. Yes. So that's another Lord to God. that we can remember that God is us. Even though we might feel like we can't help anybody, you still can, you still have value, you still have something to share. Even during a <laughs> pandemic, sometimes it's just the little things. Just checking up on somebody I haven't seen in a while. Amen. 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 Yes, amen. I have no amen. idea of somebody's going through because everybody's going through something right now. Mm-hmm. Every single person on earth right now amen. is going through something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. If you can take the time to step away from your situation, come out of your own world and help somebody else, you never know the difference you can make. You amen. never, you know. Mm-hmm. So true. Amen. Amen. We all hear about the different testimonies, testimonies, especially now, and they sometimes give us strength to go on. Yes. So Habakkuk 2 verse 2 says, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. Amen. Yes. Now at this time, remember we read the other verses from Matthew chapter 8. No, I'll be focusing on verse 26. Oh. And verse 26 says, And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Mm. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Amen. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Amen. A great calm. Um, I feel like I could have used any other phrase. The rain stopped, the winds stopped blowing, yeah. it just stopped. But instead, the author says, and there was a great calm. Mm-hmm. This can be your situation. Might not be looking good right now. You're facing the storms of life, but no storm lasts forever. Yeah. Every storm has a time limit. There's no hurricane in history that has lasted forever. No hurricane. After a certain time, it has to dissipate. It has to break apart. So no storm, even in your life, no storm will last forever. Amen. 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 It might look with very a lot of thunder, a lot of lightning right now, but guess what? So you might have lightning, thunder, everything going bad, but sooner or later, this will happen. Stop. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Lord. Lord. This will. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might not look Lord. good now. You might have lightning now. Everything's mm. going bad. It's like, where is God in all this? But sooner or later. Sooner or later. This Amen. will happen. Amen. 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 What you're going through, you might wonder where is God in your situation, but. Ooh, Anything that we face has a purpose. And mm-hmm. sometimes we have to ask God, what are you trying to teach me in this situation? Mm-hmm. What do you want me to learn from it? So that we can uh-huh. learn. Instead That's of being the lesson. Yes. Mm-hmm. Sooner or later, this will happen. Oh. Amen. Amen. So if you if you forget anything else that I said, just remember this. <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. But oh, as I said, sooner or later, if you forget everything else, yes. just try and remember this. Yes. <coughs> Amen. Now, Amen. this verse, Joshua 1, verse 9, which says, 
I have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Even though you're under lockdown for the third time, you though there are protests everywhere, you though there is crime, mm-hmm. be not afraid. Amen. Amen. Neither be thou dismayed. Mm-hmm. You though like you're not working out for you right now, even though you might not have what you want to have at this moment in time, mm-hmm. neither be thou dismayed. Really and here's the good part. For the Lord that the God, for the Lord thy God is with thee, with thee so ever thou goest. Amen. So Amen. 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 Who just always looking out for you, in, not in a good way, but always looking to see if you're going to do something wrong. God is with you even in that time. Wherever you go, in school, God is with you. Mm-hmm. You might have to go to school during a pandemic, but God is still with you. Even you for me, at Amen. university, during a pandemic, live in an area with people I don't know, but mm-hmm. God was still with me, and I'm COVID-free. Yeah. Amen. No. Amen. Amen. So wherever you go, if you're on the road, God is with you. Amen. So Amen. Hallelujah. People Amen. Who who are in the world, we are somebody that they probably don't have access to. We have Jesus. That's no right. mm-hmm. unsafe person who is here. Wouldn't you really, wouldn't you want a good friend, a true friend? Wouldn't you want someone who will be with you mm-hmm. throughout everything? You, you might have friends now, and as soon as the situation changes, they disappear. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't yes. someone yes. who will always yes. with you? Wouldn't you want a lifetime friendship? Not even lifetime alone, even after life. Forever, forever, forever. forever. Wouldn't you want a friend like that? Eternal. He is always with us. Even we can't see him, we can't see his work, we can go back to the Bible and make references and see all the good things that he has done. He raised Lazarus from the dead, he raised himself from the dead. Mm. He is still with us even today. Mm. Mm. So be strong and have a good courage. Be not afraid, even though it might look dark right now. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, with your silver and so Yes. And I'm just going to play about this video. I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for the last time, we just just take a mental picture of it. Mm. So anytime you're looking, but anytime you're looking bad, just remember that God is with you. He's not going anywhere. He's not going to only cater to the rich. There's no respect of persons. Amen. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. not, he's not somebody yeah. that can be bought. We can't buy him attention. He's always with us. No matter the age, no matter the social status, mm-hmm. no matter mm-hmm. the level of education, no matter where you live, you, he's yeah. always with yeah. us. Amen. Oh. Amen. Amen. So that's all I have for today. God is still with 